it's that time again. It's time to talk about all of the updates which have happened to Instagram in recent months. Now, it has been at least a couple months since I filmed an Instagram updates video. And honestly, when I was prepping for this, I was a bit mad at myself because there are several updates we need to get through. Like I probably should have filmed one of these videos about a month ago. So buckle up. Some of these updates are super exciting. Some are infuriating. Let's just jump right into it and talk about the very first Instagram update. All right, I'm going to start with the most disruptive of them all, or at least one of the most disruptive. This one doesn't have an official name, so I'm just going to call it participation. <laughs> not, not one of the best names I've come up with, but we're going to run with it. So this update is actually in testing and essentially it will allow you to upload a post, for example, a carousel to your Instagram and allow others to participate in that post. So for example, let's say I upload a photo and I turn on this participation option. Essentially what you guys would be able to then do is add your own content to my post. So you could add a video, you could add a photo, like you can add media to my post. So it's almost like I share something and the post takes on a life of its own and can essentially become something else. Do you guys remember when Instagram added the add your sticker to your stories and it was starting to be used a lot? I don't know if it's used as much now days, but it was used a lot when it was first announced. I think it was around last year. So if it's something really similar where it's all about participation and you're basically inviting other people to help create a piece of content with you. Interesting, right? I don't know how I feel about it. I can't think of many scenarios where I would want to upload a piece of content and have it be changed over time. Unless I was doing something like hosting an event, which to be fair, I am doing as part of my other business at the minute. Let's say I hosted a physical event. I uploaded one photo and I said, add your favorite photo from the event to this carousel. That could be cool. I'm not sure how it's going to look. I'll put a leaked screenshot of what the settings might look like, but I'm not quite sure how it's actually going to work yet. So that's currently in testing. As always, please let me know what you think about these different updates in the comments, because I absolutely love to hear your thoughts. The next update is all around adding music to your photos. It's just giving MySpace. I've, any update what's similar to this for Instagram just gives me such vivid flashbacks to my MySpace page. I wish I had a screenshot of what mine looked like so I could put it on the screen because my God, would that be embarrassing? So this update essentially allows you to add music to your carousels as well as your photos. So the actual option for you to add music to your photos was set live a little while ago, but now you can add them to your carousels. What's interesting about this this is it's very similar to what you can do on TikTok. So I don't know if you remember a while back, but TikTok announced that you could add photos to TikTok and everyone, myself included, was very confused by it. And I didn't understand how it was going to work for their platform. Now, it actually turned out to be fine and people got really creative with it because what it wasn't was just a plain photo like the ones you upload on Instagram. What it actually was, was a carousel that moves by itself with a soundtrack over it. So instead this content format kind of took on a world of its own and started to become unique to TikTok itself. Now it sounds like Instagram saw that and was like, hold on a minute. We gave you the opportunity to add music to your photos. Hardly any of you are using it yet TikTok allow you to do something similar and you'll all jump on it. And they're probably thinking, do the same thing for us. And now we can. Will it be used the same way? Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm not sure. I'm not convinced it will be used the same way as it's used on TikTok. As I said, I don't see many people using music for their photos right now. So if you're someone who's ever done that before, let me know what you thought of the feature and if you found it useful in any way. I think adding music to your carousels is a great way for you to contextualize your content further. Outside of that, I don't know how much it's going to be used. Let's just wait and see. By the way, guys, if you want more frequent updates on like Instagram updates and TikTok updates and just create a news in general, General. I do have a newsletter and on every single Friday, every single week, I share a wrap up of the top news stories. I dive deep into a trending topic. I answer your questions and I share an opportunity of the week for anyone who's trying to become a paid content creator. So I'll put a link in the description in case you want to sign up to my free newsletter. Okay. So this next update I've actually already used. So this is tried and tested. It is live. We all have access to it. It is called three collabs. It's not what it's called. I've just made that up. I'm, I'm calling it three collabs. Essentially what it is, is a feature which allows you to collaborate with up to two additional people on a post. So let me explain. A while back, Instagram introduced collaborative posts, which allow you to upload a reel, a photo, a carousel in collaboration with someone else, which means that post will appear on two Instagram channels at the same time 
time. Now you're able to add another account to this post. So a great example is this post here. This was the launch post that I shared to announce an event that I threw in August. Now this carousel was shared to one of my business accounts, the creator project, that was the business that threw the event. It was also shared to my account, Jade Beeson, because I run the creator project. And it was shared to Millie Adrian's account, also known as Modern Millie, because she was a guest speaker at the event. So the post went live across all three of our channels. Before you run to use this feature, I do have a bone to pick with this. Ever since I've started to use this collaborative post feature on a regular basis, I have noticed that the reach is not great. So the thing is, is if you've got a small account or a brand new account, the reach that you're going to get if you share something in collaboration with another account is always going to be better than the reach that you get by yourself. 100%. However, if you already have an established account, I have noticed that the reach that you get when it's in collaboration with someone else is actually less than what you normally have. So the perfect example is my personal account, Jade Beeson, and then my business account, The Creator Project. Every now and then I upload a post to both accounts. If I've got a really cool podcast interview going live or something like that, I'll upload it to both accounts. Now, the reach that I get is usually somewhere in between the reach I would get for my personal account and the reach I would get for this newer account, which means that it's low for my personal account, but high for my business account. So this shouldn't discourage you from using this feature. It's just something worth flagging. You will reach a new audience, but it seems like your content will be less likely to get on the explore page, for example. Okay, are we still with me? Because I've got multiple left, but I'm trying to keep up the pace. So this next one is called multi-advertiser display. And I do not like this one one bit. <laughs> not a fan. Essentially what it does is it groups together multiple different ads that you might see on Instagram and it allows you to see them all at once in this like grid format. So I could basically see four different ads in one screen. Who asked for that? I'm guessing the advertisers asked for it. I don't want to see four ads in one screen. I barely want to see one ad. I just don't like it. I also, even from an advertiser's perspective, I don't know if I would want my ad to be condensed and shared with three other brands' ads on one screen. I just don't think it's something I would like. Now, I understand that what this might mean from an advertiser's perspective is that you might be able to save some money. So these ad placements where you're sharing the screen with three other brands, they will be cheaper than your your normal ad placements, right? So you can save some money there. And I can imagine that it might still be effective when you are retargeting someone who's already seen or interacted with your brand. Therefore, I can imagine the fact that they're only seeing a little bit of your brand on the screen might still be enough for them to take action. Outside of that though, I'm not convinced. Okay, so this next update is an interesting one. Do you guys remember when Instagram introduced the ability for us to turn off our like count, right? It wasn't that long ago. It was quite a big deal. Well, now they're testing adding a new metric that people can see. So now they're testing adding a share count to our content. And I just find it interesting to remove one metric and add a new one. Now I've done a bit of research, obviously. And what I can tell is that maybe they're adding this share count because they think it will encourage people to share content more. And there's been a lot of studies done recently and Instagram have been very vocal about this, that they believe that most interactions and conversations are moving to the DMs. They're moving to private forums. That's the trend that they're seeing in user behavior for Instagram users. They're obviously trying to do different different things to facilitate that and encourage people to share more content privately in their DMs because that's what people apparently want to do. So this, you would argue, might encourage more of that. If you can see that a thousand people have shared that post, it might encourage you to share the post, whereas previously maybe you wouldn't have shared it. So share counts might be appearing under our content moving forward. I definitely want to hear what you guys think about that because I'm kind of on the fence at the moment. This next one is my favorite. This one is about DM controls. Essentially, Instagram have released some new features which allow you to have better control over your direct messages. So anyone watching who is victim to unsolicited messages every now and again, especially like in the form of videos or photos, listen up because this one's gonna massively help you out. So essentially these new restrictions mean that anyone who you are not connected to, so you don't follow each other, their ability to send you content will be restricted. So from now on, they can only send like text only invites. So you know when someone DMs you who you're not familiar with and it goes to your request section. So they can still do that, but they can't send you a video or a photo. Also, they won't be able to send you follow up messages until you accept their invitation or until you like move them to your main inbox. That means they can only send like one text-based message to you and they can't continue 
continue to message you until you decide that you want them to. So I'm a big fan of this update. This is my favorite of the bunch. I think it's long overdue, but you know what? Better late than never. All right, guys, stick with me. We've only got two more left. Although this next one is like, there's like several updates within it. So this next one is all about AI. Oh, what a shocker. There are AI updates. There are actually several AI updates. These are all in testing though. So I'm going to run you through what these are so you can keep a lookout for them. So the first is called generative AI stickers. Essentially, this would allow you to open up your stories, add this generative AI sticker, and you can type a prompt onto the screen and content would appear based on your prompt. So you guys might've seen a lot of these like videos on TikTok at the moment where people are talking about about Adobe Firefly and doing those demonstrations where they type in like add a flag and then a flag appears and it's like all wild. It's like that, but just nowhere near as advanced as Adobe Firefly, but it's like that, right? Similarly, they're also testing a visual editing tool, which will allow you to remove or replace elements of your content using this new AI tool. So you could like remove a person from your backdrop using Instagram's AI tools. They're also testing an AI chat bot, which would basically allow people to communicate with a bot in your DMs if that's something that people want to do. They're also testing this message summary feature, which basically would allow AI to read for all of your DMs and summarize what they say. This one, I can't wrap my head around. If you think this would be useful to you, please let me know in the comments how you would use it. Because from my perspective, if I had this AI tool, which told me, hey Jade, all of your DMs are about Instagram. I'd be like, cool, I still need to go through all the DMs and respond. Like it doesn't really help me that much, but let me know if you could find a better use for it. <laughs> the last one is very, welcome. And this one is an AI label. So this is basically to say that if you're going to use any of these new tools when they're released and create content using AI, there will be a label on your content, which says this piece of content has been created in part using AI, which is very important because I've heard a lot of stuff about AI recently and about the fact that in the future, almost everything shared on the internet will be fake petrifying thought. So things like this, where you are clearly stating that something has been created using AI is very, very important. So I'm really glad that was thrown in there. Guys, we've made it. This is the final update. I promise not to leave it so long in between these videos in the future. This one's one of my favorites. It is the updates which have come to the Reels templates feature. If you are late to Reels templates, essentially it is a feature which allows you to replicate the editing from someone else's Reel for your own. So you know when you see a Reel that like jumps from different images and there's only a few seconds per image and it's all perfectly aligned with the song. Now you can actually press the template button, import your own media, and you can very easily create your own reel that replicates that style. The change is that now you can actually browse templates, which is a great update because previously you just had to scroll through the reels tab until you found a reel that you might want to use for inspo. Whereas now you can actively browse and scroll Sorry guys, I'm just laughing because my partner just came home. He didn't want to interrupt my filming. So he's just climbed through the bedroom window <laughs> to sit on the balcony. Anyway, now all you have to do is browse through Reels templates to get your own inspo and to find content that way. So follow the steps that I would have hopefully had on the screen whilst I was talking to see how you can find this new feature. Okay guys, thank you so much for sticking with me through all of those updates. Please let me know what you think about those updates in the comments section. If you feel like hanging around, I recommend watching this video. It's all about what you should do if your Instagram account is dead or dying. So a very important video to watch. Thank you so much for watching as always. Can't wait to see you in my next video.